What's this? A new Indiana Jones movie this month? What in the world could I do to tie into that? Oh sure, there's plenty of knockoffs from the 80s, from 3D movies like Treasure of the Four Crowns or the canon knockoffs, but I've been doing enough canon movies lately, and we'll get to some of these in 1983 in film. But what's more 80s than canon 80s? How about Ronald Reagan himself as an Indiana Jones type? That's right, this has got to be the most 80s movie of the 1950s. And you have no idea how much this works out. By sheer coincidence, I wrote and shot this episode on not only the anniversary of Raiders' release, but it's also the anniversary of the Berlin Wall speech. Sure, Indiana Jones wasn't the first adventurer character like this, as the series came about from Lucas and Spielberg's love of old adventure serials of the 30s and 40s, plus Spielberg's desire to have his own James Bond-type character. And one of the movies where you could draw a lot of parallels between old movies and Indiana Jones is the movie Hong Kong starring Ronald Reagan. A lower budgeted movie since Reagan was a B-movie actor in the golden age of cinema, but B-movies in an early meaning of the term, it wasn't so much monster or exploitation or drive-in movies he was in, but these were still studio movies, just in the B circuit with smaller budgets. And while he wasn't A-list necessarily, he would headline many of these movies, to put it lightly, sometimes several in the same year. That's a lot of wartime pictures and westerns, but probably his best known movie, in that it's pretty much the one that gets referenced the most, was his 1951 box office comedy hit Bedtime for Bonzo. Loved by Bigfoots everywhere. That's outright bribery. <laughs> But what would Reagan's follow-up film be? Well, 1952 did have a sequel called Bonzo Goes to College, but none of the actors returned. So instead, we got the generically titled Hong Kong, where Reagan protects a Chinese boy and his golden idol from communists. That's about as Reagan as Indiana Jones of a plot as you can get! It even has its own short round! But seriously, guys, what did you spend, like five minutes coming up with the title? It was better when they re-released it in 61 and called it Bombs Over China. In this opening credit sequence, it looks like you just went to the Chinese restaurant across from the studio and filmed what was behind the cash register. The movie was written by Winston Miller, a former silent film actor, but also wrote the 1937 Dick Tracy film. While the story comes from the movie's director, Lewis Foster, who did win a screenwriting Oscar for Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And in case you forgot the memorable title... Hong Kong. Like the travel folder says, it's quite a city. And that's all it said. I don't think the writer spent time here at all. Reagan's narration says that this place is a haven for political refugees and warlords on the run. Plus, it's a listening post for commie China, a rumor mill, propaganda machine. Less than a minute for the word commie to be used in the Reagan movie. However, the place is notoriously overrun by stock footage. Where almost everybody's running away from something, including me. Yep, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got to look this gorgeous. Well, strap yourself in. Oh no, wait, here he is. Yes, this is 50s Indiana Jones, which means he's immediately smoking a cigarette. And already I don't know where this is going. Most people have dogs or cats. Me, I'm different. I've got a cricket. This is what happens when you throw Casablanca and Pinocchio into a blender. Reagan plays Jeff Williams, which settles it. This is in Indiana Jones continuity, because I'm gonna pretend Jeff Williams is Mutt Williams' father. Also, it's Reagan. You should have called him Dutch Williams. Much cooler adventurer name. About the first half of the story is told in flashback about how he got here, which will involve fire. The Reds were on their way into Chekiang province. Okay, guys, my bad. I thought it was a trash can. I didn't know throwing my cigarette into a wok would cause this grease fire. So Jeff is a military vet on the run from the Reds, where everywhere there's bullets being dropped from the sky. That's just rude. But you can tell he wants wealth because he poses an extreme fortune and glory stance. Well, maybe if I just sit here and look cool, something will come my way. Ah, excellent. This guy is bound to have some treasure on him. 
How about a lift, mister? Eh, that works out. He was just gonna send me to Pancot Palace anyway. Screw them kids. But this is how he meets a new friend! Well, you wanna be a real boy, don't ya? Well, I ain't magical, so I just snatched one for you. Let you and me have a little talk. Hey, take it easy. Wailing voted for Mondale. Wailing is played by actor Danny Chang, a child actor who was in a handful of stuff in the 50s. It is filling in the gaps before Temple. Look, kid, we gotta get to know each other, then we're off to Shanghai. I need you to drive a getaway car when me and a nightclub singer jump out a window. Then we're gonna be the best of friends. Things weren't tough enough. I had to inherit a kid. And not a living soul around to palm him off on. I love that that means that if there was a stranger there, he'd be like, eh, take the kid. Ah, perfect. You all seem friendly. Who will take the child? Um, okay, well, one of you has got to be my good friend, John Wayne. I know this looks sinister, but I can assure you, the cricket can explain everything. Don't worry, folks. This is a movie, after all. That won't be necessary. Excellent. There was a 100% chance there'd be a hot American actress here. In this case, Rhonda Fleming, who plays teacher and Red Cross volunteer Victoria Evans. I love that Jeff has a look of, okay, I don't really want to be here, but she's hot. Also, got any hot mustard for this? It's a little bland. Oh, uh, that reminds me. Here, you're insulting them and you're embarrassing me. Stop snoring. So, what's his deal? Did his folks die or something? Ask him. It's your freaky. Bum, bum. Hmm, I think his dad was an actor and his movies bombed. Jeff cares deeply about this. He doesn't seem to know about his mother. And he got a lot of company these days. Thanks for the food. I love this guy. Well, <laughs> your problem now. See ya. Though Jeff stays because he finds out they're waiting for a plane, and that'll be his ticket out of this country. Plus, that's a perfect setup for me to make a joke about jumping out of it in a raft. I will say, Reagan is quite good in this. The high turnaround of his movies would lead people to think he was a bad actor, and he wasn't. He had the movie star looks and the right amount of charisma to lead these smaller films. And once in a while, with stuff like King's Row and his villainous role in Don Siegel's The Killers, he could show that he did have some dramatic chops. And he is well cast here as a chain-smoking, flirty thief. Of course, they didn't look like you. Maybe if they had, I might have done more homework. First Lady Victoria Evans has a nice ring to it. No time for backstory now. The commies are on their way. Don't worry. All I have to do is sit here and look badass, and they'll run for their lives. I'm Reagan. The village has a plan. Make the Reds think that some Italian filmmakers are shooting cannibal holocaust here. Ah, thanks for helping us land, assholes. The smoke didn't make it easy. Whoa, whoa, whoa there, folks. There's a ton of you. I don't know about this. Also, you should have checked your lit torches. Those aren't carry-on items. And Jeff is still like, screw him. Let him go. No, let go. Uh, okay, guess he's fine and only like four feet from us. Also, is he sitting on the injured old man? Oh, sorry, I thought you were a neck pillow. This is still uncomfortable. Oh, hello. This belongs in a museum. My museum. The Reagan Library and Museum. Get a load of what the kid's carrying around in his bundle. Oh my god, that must have cost him 10,000 arcade tickets. Now I can make a sleeping on the plane then jumping out in a raft reference. Let's take a break so I can figure out a way to work in Kalima. When he heard the news, he left in haste. Didn't want to miss that big bowl take. McDonald's Caramels. Caramel. For a limited time. To go at McDonald's. We're back and Jeff Williams is awake and flirting. Be careful. I'm sorry. The thing must be older than you are. Sorry, you just look a little wrinkly in the morning is all. <laughs> Love you. Ooh, 50 iPad. Let's get some music in here. Who likes Lee Greenwood? Well, that's what you're gonna hear. Turns out, though, that carrying three tons over the limit isn't the best idea. Guys, where's the parachute? I just need one. I don't care about your plane problems. Anyway, seems legit. Lighten the load and tag your luggage. It should all fall in the same area. Then we'll jump in the nearest pond and come back for it. Wait, wait, no, no, not that. I was going to play some Pat Boone. Here, kid, if anyone asks, it's full of milk chocolate. They've finally made it to this British colony in Hong Kong where, haha, 50s customs. Yeah, 
We brought this little boy with us. He's an orphan. Oh, so you don't need your complimentary orphan child at the exit. Okay, move along, sir. I trust these two not to lose the kid when they're arguing. Wait a minute. You know I wouldn't do anything in the world to hurt him. Wailing. Wailing. I'm right behind you idiots! Already it seems like there's schemes going on in the hotel. I'm sorry, they're reserved. That's why the people in them had to vacate. That's what you fellows always say. Dude looks like this was his eighth attempt to get a room. Now he's gonna take his makeup off, come back, and try again as an Italian man. Never mind that though, Jeff and the kid are becoming the best of friends. Hey, bub, take it easy. Now cut it out! God, I would have loved a Reagan cop and a half movie. This is so action-packed, even the building on the hotel painting is on fire. <laughs> that's cozy and comforting. Anyway, you take the kid out to eat or something. I'm gonna be gone for a while. Gotta be a cat house around here somewhere. Here he's figuring out a way to steal the statue from the safe that Victoria signed for. So in the meantime, he goes to find out how much it's worth by simply describing it, which leads him to Tao the Expert. I've heard you're expert on old Chinese art objects. I'm flattered that someone thinks so. Good, come over here. You'll be the Sala of the movie. Luckily, it's in his big picture book of idols that American adventurers come to steal. But there's something about the way this guy looks and talks. How much would a thing like that be worth? To the legal owner, I would say over 200,000 in Hong Kong dollars. Huh, you're American, aren't you, Tao? Why, what do you mean? I'm not American actor Marvin Miller from St. Louis. Though this is close to John Wayne being in the film, Marvin also played Genghis Khan. Also, Tao now wants his hands on the idol, so he's not the Sala here, he's the Belloc! Jeff is definitely an anti-hero, he's already looking to steal the idol and jump ship in the nearest insert shot of a boat. You can tell this is a B-movie because it pads itself out by showing every mundane task in his plan. I'm surprised it didn't show him ask about what time complimentary breakfast ends. Oh, ends in a few hours. Gives me more time to flirt. Hey, what happened to the school teacher? She went shopping. Like it? Prettiest wife I ever had. <laughs> Don't tell Jane Wyman or Nancy that I said that. They still have a fun time. Crossfades and reactions means they're having the time of their lives. Yeah, okay, he's gonna be spinning those plates for a while. I got enough time to do my business. His scheme? Delivering her a fake message that says she's due at the Red Cross. Oh, shame you gotta leave. <laughs> now give the hotel manager permission for me to get in the safe! Ah, oh, damn it. Should have said that less sinister. Alright, grab your cricket, kid. Quit dawdling. Hello, Stromboli? Need a new act? I got a delivery. Look, it's not unrealistic for many of us to still live with Disney characters. After all, we share a place with Cy and Am in the next room. We're here, kid. The corner of stalling and padding. <laughs> Sorry, did we leave something behind on the trolley? I'm sure Wei Ling can warm Jeff's icy cold heart. And damn it, kid. Here, look. That's shiny. Buy it and break it. Kids love breaking things. Leave me alone. Damn, the heartwarming music is telling me I should start liking you now. Guess we can play hide-and-seek, or whatever. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, that was fun. Let's play tag. It's where I hit you with a giant stick, right? Here, we got an appointment. Maybe this restaurant will let us film the stuff behind the register for the opening credits. I love that the sound of the cricket makes it look like I added those sound effects to shots where characters aren't saying anything. Here, eat your noodles. Gotta be a Plinko machine around here somewhere to pass the time. And he still ditches the kid, where we're caught up to the beginning of the movie. Any way you look at it, he was better off than he was when I picked him up. At least he had his belly full of noodles. See, he'll be fine. The fortune cookie also tells him that, and even gives him some lottery numbers to play. Jeff may be trying to sell the idol and disappear, but he's being reminded of bad karma coming his way. Leave me alone. I don't want to have to think about how I stole from an orphan kid. Ugh, I miss the subtlety of patriotic American orphans. He's had a change of heart with the sight of the villains wanting to make the deal. I guess that means he likes the kid now, and also the kid being full of noodles? 
Oh my god, he gets full! Just like me! I'm still gonna pretend I don't like you, just for appearances. Jeff, why did you put these filthy clothes back on him? I want to turn him back the way I found him. So, let's put him back on the boat. Jeff also has to break up with the villain. They'll have to go off and get their faces melted without him. Play it cool, Jeff. Don't let her know you're a jerk. I wasn't selling it for Wei Ling. I was stealing it. That whole gag this afternoon was just a plan to get rid of you so I could ditch the kid. God, honesty turns me on. Your voodoo economics puts a spell on me every time. They're all figuring out his schemes. They were posing as another couple to get into the hotel, and now the actual people showed up, so they're getting thrown out. Damn it, Axel Foley made it look so easy! Until Victoria screams at them, saying, Well, you weren't using the room, asshole! And then that works! Aren't you ashamed of yourself? Trying to bully this poor defenseless girl? <laughs> but they stole from me! Nonsense! I like his foreign policy! He stands up to the Soviets down the hall! <laughs> Wait, crying child? Um, can we change our minds? What's the matter, fella? Too many noodles? For children always cry. Nothing to get so excited about. Give him a good spanking. I don't see how this scene could top either of those lines. Great Scott, a Chinese baby. <laughs> Never mind. The real treasure is in all the dialogue. Yes, yes, good night, all. As for you, my dear, divorce as soon as we get home. What a hotel. Just light up. They're sleeping just fine. <laughs> <laughs> so now it's the scene where Jiminy Cricket is trying to sleep with the clocks ticking? I guess we can fall asleep out here. It's a bit more romantic. Uh, my arm's kind of asleep, though. Thanks. They are destined to be together. He loves it when she talks exposition. That's Jeff Williams, born in a white adobe ranch house near Douglas, Arizona. Cut his first tooth on a saddle horn, spoke his first cuss words in Spanish. Hoo-hoo, how's he gonna top that? That's Victoria Evans, raised in a two-story house in Evansville, Indiana. 50s sexual chemistry, just describing biographical facts about the other person. Still, we can't get too romantic until we get some nice Roy Rogers music playing. We'll take it. Let's take a break so we can wind this bad boy up. Collect all three, but hurry, because everyone is going to want one. We're back, and no joke, someone snuck into the room, stabbed the old man, and kidnapped the child. This got serious fast. <laughs> what a final night alive this guy had. You all got a man killed. Smart kidnappers, by the way. They send a ransom note via telegram, where it goes immediately to the police. That sets up for a sting operation, blending right into the stock footage. Can't see us standing here out in the open, with all our other agents clearly being undercover. They'd have been more subtle if they sent in DC with a transmitter on his collar. Oh, and the trade-off doesn't work, by the way. You've got to let me go. What's this all about? What happened? They knew the police were watching. Oh, really? What gave it away? Jeff's gonna need a much larger hat to solve this. When Reagan puts on his 10-gallon hat, you know it's a bad day to be a commie. We're also going to need something close to the Indiana Jones music to make this chase more suspenseful. That actually is kind of close. You make the exchange, dear. I'll just be here safely behind this wall. Really, they're not much more competent than the police. One tap on the head, and he's down, and they steal the idol and leave. It's times like this I wish this were a Pink Panther movie. Because the chase scene would be way zanier. This is all pretty easy. Okay, fine. We'll track them down at their place of residence instead. The villains are very helpful. If you don't have a gun, it's okay. We'll leave one for you. We may not be here, but we'll leave the address where you can find us and what time. God, idiots. It's a sprawling cross-country epic of things conveniently working out fine. Well, we've got some time to kill at the airport. Want to get a couple crossword puzzles from the duty-free shop? Or uh, stop and eat at the Johnny Rockets? Watch for Tao. He'll be the one dressed like an obvious villain. Ooh, careful now. He's fast. That won't be necessary. <laughs> 
smooth. Don't worry, we can still fill up some time. Where are you taking us? To a section called Aberdeen. And those were the only lines in that scene. Anyway, the kid is out there in the middle of this other stock footage. Not only is he a dirty kidnapper, but sexist too. In my country, the man tells the woman what to do. How's your country doing? Ooh, progressive Reagan. I don't think this will be a simple trade-off though. Someone's gonna betray somebody. I thought we had a deal. You don't really expect me to believe you were intending to go through with it. I stand corrected, he isn't the Belloc, he's the Lao Shea, of course! It's still gonna conveniently work out with a quick punch to the face and a small fire. This is a pretty generic, easy to script, just get from point A to point B flick. It wouldn't take much to adapt it to another genre like a gangster film noir or a western. Like a lot of these kinds of pictures at the time, they were the conveyor belt movies of their day. It isn't that it's badly made or badly acted, it's just made and acted. It's the very definition of the word serviceable. It's mainly memorable for the obvious parallels you can make nowadays to the Indiana Jones franchise. And with Reagan being the lead on top of that, that does elevate the curiosity factor. There's still entertaining things in it, like how much Jeff spends the movie not giving a shit. And there's some funny lines, though a disappointing conclusion. Oh yes, Lighten's being transferred to King's Hospital in case you care to look in on it. Oh, how is he? Getting along splendidly. Boo! It was more hilarious when he was dead. You just chickened out and threw that line in at the last minute. But this makes up for it. Wailing! Wailing! Ah, he's officially an American. He's got his papers and a complimentary Hopalong Cassidy outfit. Uh, let's get out of here. I gotta speak at the Goldwater Convention. The end! The kids will return as creepy ghosts in a horror film. In a perfect world, we would have gotten far more Jeff Williams movies. Just saying, I would have loved to have seen Reagan chop a rope bridge in half. And I didn't even get a chance to make a Kali Ma reference like I promised. I'm going to take legal action against you for this. You have every right to. You shut up.